Good morning, church family. This is Harry here. Um, just a couple of announcements. As you know, we are not meeting normally on uh, uh, at church now for the foreseeable future. Our conference superintendent, out of the abundance of caution and safety for everybody, has asked that we shut down all the facilities of our churches except what is needed to make sure that people are fed and taken care of. So this is, I guess, how we're going to do church for the next few weeks, hopefully not months. Um, I got to be honest, this is weird for you as it is for me. You know, this morning I'm drinking my coffee out of my, you know, Somerset Beach coffee mug, thinking that hopefully this summer, while we're all at family camp together as a church family, we can look back at this time as a period of really a new direction and a new purpose for us as a church family. Um, so here goes. Today's reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 1 through 8. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all of Israel. I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord, your God himself, will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations before you. You will take possession of their land. Joshua will also cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, among whom he destroyed them along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you. You must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This morning, folks, this is where our focus is going to be. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Basically, this is God telling us he's in this with us. He is not going to forsake us and he is not going to leave us. Now, going on with what the reading says. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous. For you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. You must divide it amongst them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, good morning, church family. You know, I'm praying that all of you are doing well this morning and coping as best you can. I got to be honest with you, this isolation is really, really tough because I would much rather be preaching to your beautiful faces than to my stupid cell phone. But we are what we are with what we have this in this situation. So let's be blessed that we have at least some means of being able to communicate with each other via our Facebook page in the coffee house, as well as e emails, texting, and whatnot. It's really important that we as a church family stick together and serve one another and be there for each other. You know, we are living and experiencing unprecedented times in the history of our, this country, and for that matter, the history of the world. You know, we can have confidence though because the Lord himself goes before us. He will be with us and he will never leave us or forsake us. You know, when God repeats himself in scriptures, he's trying to make a point. We see in today's reading, this being with us and being, being, um, being courageous, being repeated two and three times. He's trying to tell us, look, I got this covered. We're gonna get through this but we got to get through it together. It's times like this that all of us are going to be tested. 
I'm being tested. You're being tested. Our patience is being tested. It's really, really hard to keep our focus on what God wants us to do. But we got to remember, once again, the Lord himself goes before us and will be with us. And he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. You know, it's during times like this that makes it all the more critical that we as a church family cling to God and to each other in order to get through this together. We have got to be able to count on each other, serve one another, pray for one another, be there for one another. Because we got to remember, we are all in this together. That seems to be a popular phrase that I'm seeing both on social media, on television, on the news, and whatever. We are all in this together. We are one family. I understand the fear that some of you may be experiencing. To be quite honest with you, there are times that I get a little overwhelmed and full of fear myself. And I have to remind myself that the Lord himself goes before me and he will be with me. He will never leave me, nor will he forsake me. With this kind of confidence, because of his backing, you know what? Even though there are times I feel like I'm swimming up river and, and, and getting nowhere, I just got to remember that all I have to do is keep listening to God and not listening to anything that tells me that I'm not good enough, strong enough, or whatever enough, but instead doing the best I can with what I have every single day. This is why today's reading really hits home for all of us. The nation of Israel, after 40 years of wandering in the desert, searching for a new identity, an identity from being slaves to a nation of slaves to being a nation of free men and conquerors, empowered by God to do amazing things. There's a change in leadership that is taking place. And that is always scary for any people with Moses stepping down and Joshua taking over and going on, going up against an enemy that if you remember earlier in scriptures where they were afraid and God said, that's fine. You're going to wait another 40 years before you can get into the promised land. It was still the same enemy. And on paper, it looked like this is an impossible task. But remember, like I said last week, with God, all things are possible. The people were afraid of the unknown. Much like what we're experiencing today with COVID-19 virus. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. All we know is that we got to face today. And we can face to today knowing that God is with us and that we as a church family are together and we have all things in common, as I preached last week from Acts 2. And we will come together and support each other and rally together and be there for each other. You know, the unknowns we're facing is every single day, more and more people are becoming infected. Every day we see our normal patterns of life disrupted. Every day, both the financial markets and the supermarket are with empty dreams and empty shells. Our normal pace of life is being disrupted by these unknown variables going on around us. But we all must remember, the Lord himself goes before us. He will be with us. He will le never leave us, nor will he forsake us. For me, where my regret is, instead of spending Sunday morning in our beautiful little church on East River Street in Deerfield, we're doing church in front of our computer screens and our phones. I'll be honest with you, it's a struggle for me to preach to my cell phone. However, the Bible tells us 365 times we should fear God. God is telling each of us every single day to calm down and not allow our fears to take over our emotions and our decisions and how we do things. He's telling this every single day, no matter how bad the news may be. He is saying, I am the Lord. And I am still and will always be in control. He's asking us to trust him because the Lord himself will go before us and will be with us always. He will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. 
Today's reading is God telling all of us, do not be afraid. God has got this covered. Got to remember, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And he will be there for every single one of us who are willing to give up the control that we just love to have and give our fears and give our anxieties to him and allow his spirit to fill our hearts and minds with the idea that our Heavenly Father loves us and will work through this with all of us as long as we have the attitude, we're all in this together. There will always be hope with God in our lives, a great hope. Our hope is not found in our bank accounts, the stuff in our homes, or our abilities apart from God. Our hope is and will always should be in Jesus and his provision and his protection over all of us. The Lord himself goes before us and will be with us. He will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. In the scriptures today, God is working through Joshua in order to complete what was started with Moses with the burning bush in the wilderness. God was now, God was now going to deliver on his promise to his family, Israel. Today, God is going to deliver all of us this morning, his family, our church family of the Deerfield Free Methodist Church. Like I stated early, we are all in this together. You, me, God will get us through this together. Because once again, the Lord himself goes before us and will be with us. He will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. I'm going to close with this Psalm 61 verses 2 through 4. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Let's all take a lesson from King David this morning. That during this time of upheaval in our lives, to take refuge in God's love and care for us and dwell in his presence. Because once again, the Lord himself goes before us and will be with us, and he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. I'm going to end this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you come into the hearts and minds of everybody that listens and views this video. I ask you to fill them with your sense of peace and calm and confidence, that we will get through this. We will prevail. Lord, we appreciate and thank you for everything that you have done for us, we thank you that all of us have a place to live, we have food in our refrigerators, and we are, have the safety of our homes. And I ask you, Lord, that anybody that is in need in our congregation, that they are willing to come forward and say, hey, I need something. And we as a congregation, like they did in Acts 2, have all things in common, selling possessions to help those in need. We ask this in your most powerful name. Amen. I'm praying for you all. I hope everything goes well. And if there's anything you need, if you want a pastoral visit, please give me a call or text me and I will do what we can. Even if that pastoral visit involves me standing in your driveway and waving to you. I'm more than happy to do that. I love you all. And if there's anything you need, please, please don't face this alone because we are all in this together. Thank you very much.